Hey pilots and aircraft owners, Mike Borders of the Mike Borders channel. If you're joining us from the previous video on the basic introduction of the ADS-B out and in features, glad to have you. If not, check that out prior to watching this one. You might benefit from it and then come right back to this video and check this out. But this is going to be a basic introduction to the Lynx NGT-9000 transponder unit that many pilots and aircraft owners are installing in their aircraft. In this video I want to cover the features of this NGT 9000 unit. It's going to be touch screen which is pretty neat. That is a very popular feature in today's society and what I mentioned in the previous video a lot or almost 100 percent of people that own aircraft the transponders if you think and remember they're usually always on the bottom of the avionics stack However, with this transponder, most, if not all, pilots and aircraft owners are giving this transponder a promotion and moving it all the way to the top of the avionics stack. You'll see why once we go through this. This again is a touchscreen display, and it's going to allow you to swipe through different pages to access all the different types of features and assets that this transponder provides. So let's talk about this left side first. Standing out, obviously the biggest thing on this side is the transponder code. Let's say for example you launch off your local airport and you want flight following to your destination. You're going to call approach and they are going to provide you with a squat code. Again, touch screen, you're going to reach up and select the 1200 with your fingertip. This screen is going to come up and say for example approach said squat 5525. You're going to select that with your finger, and as you can see here, it has entered the code in green. Once you're done, you will select that, and boom, there it is standing out. Your squat code is now visible to air traffic control on their end as well as your end. And as you fly closer to your destination and you get it in sight, if it's a towered airport, in most cases, air traffic control will say, radar service terminated, squat VFR, contact tower. So again, just by the finger, you'll reach up, squawk VFR, and by selecting that, it immediately goes to the VFR squawk code of 1200. Now, say for example, mid-flight you accidentally hit that, well, the system or transponder stores that previous code that you had. So all you'll have to do to resubmit that squawk code, if you forgot what it was, is just reach up and select that, and there it is. So now we're VFR and it's going to give the ID of your aircraft and your altitude and in most cases on flight following or radar reception vectors the air traffic control will ask you to ident and that's going to make you blink on their screen again touch screen all you'll do is reach up here and select ident you'll see that icon pop up that will indicate that you have selected it and they are receiving it. As far as the mode, we all know once we are going through the checklist on the ground, we are usually off, but we put it on standby as we taxi out to the runway. And just prior to departure, we will set it on altitude. Okay, so that's what that feature is. Now moving over to the right side of the transponder unit. This is kind of like your MFD portion of the transponder screen. It is highly advanced with features that are extremely beneficial to you as you're flying around. So let's talk about the range first. As you can see in the lower left hand corner you have in. Again, touch of the finger you're going to select that. It's going to go all the way down and zoom in to two nautical mile radius. On the opposite side, lower right hand corner, you select that and it is going to go all the way out to 40 nautical miles radius and again that is up to you if you want it 24 or 12 that's up to you as far as the traffic the cool feature here again with the ADSB package that you did not have before kind of gives you an onboard traffic display as you can see here and by the touch of the finger you reach up you select this aircraft that is 500 feet above you 
it's going to pull up their registration number and in addition to that registration number if you click on this little icon here it's going to provide you with more in-depth information on that aircraft the registration number the type of aircraft large single engine and its ground speed of 205 knots and it kinda looks like a Lattice, but it may, may or may not be. And you can click on all different aircraft, again, by the touch of a finger. This is the tail number for that one. Let's see what that is. That is a large single engine. And see the icon picture changed. This little icon up here, basically your setting, it's going to provide you the GPS reception of all the signals that are required, as you can see here, and then settings initial traffic altitude mode, normal, above, unrestricted. And it also will allow you to select the brightness of the display. Again, all touch screen, which is neat. And we will go ahead and select done. And in that setting, what I was talking about just recently, you've got the normal mode, you've got the unrestricted mode, you've got the below mode as far as traffic, and you've got the above. Now let's talk about the additional screens as you see here. There's four additional or three additional screens here, four total, and on the left part only two. So what I will do is I will shift over one page. This is an extremely attractive feature for this transponder. It's the ADS-B in portion and it is going to allow you to bring in on-board weather to the actual cockpit which is pretty darn cool. As you can see here I want to point out they show the state of Michigan. The cool thing about this company it's Grand Rapids Michigan based and all of these units are made in the USA. In order for you to have one of these transponders installed in your aircraft you will have to go through a dealer that is tied to Lynx manufacturer and by doing that, come up here to find a dealer, type in your zip code, and it will pull up a series or options of dealers that are able to install this unit. So when you click on these blue circles here, they're, as you can see, airport. And on the left screen, look what it brings up. It brings up the METAR for Lansing. And then this one would be Detroit, Michigan. So it's the 28th of August, UTC time of 1853, winds 160 at 10 knots, no gusts, visibility 10 miles, no significant weather, ceiling at least 12,000 feet AGL, sky clear, temperature 3, altimeter 3033, and it is VFR. And any remarks that the station will provide on the METAR or ATIS will be under there. Again, let's go over here, see what Chicago's doing. And again, it just is a cool feature to have. So let's go ahead and swipe over. Actually, before, look at these little circles. These are NOTAMs, TFRs. You talk about enhancing the awareness of TFRs, weather, while you're out flying. It's all right here on the screen, which is really cool. Now let's move on to the third page. Third page allows you to see the winds aloft. So you have temperatures, 47, 48, 49, and winds. This feature right here will allow you to select the altitude. Let's go to 6,000. And as you climb, you'll notice the wind direction changes. And you can go all the way up to flight level 390. Okay, but in most cases, general aviation, if you're flying a 152 like we are, we're not going to ever get up that high, so maybe 6,000 is the one. Six to 3,000 is the one that we will be most likely looking at. Let's hop over to the fourth page. This is basically the page that is going to provide you with all the METARs and TAPs. Come up to here, again, hand select, and say, for example, you want to select... Ann Arbor, Michigan, K-A-R-B, Alfa Romeo Bravo, select done, and obviously because this is a simulator, you're not up flying, it's not going to pick it up, 
but you are going to be able to pick up the uh, METARs or TAFs. We can switch this to a METAR there. And it's going to provide the METAR. And this pretty cool feature here, STAR, you can make it your favorite. So next time you go flying, you just click on this, and it's going to see Ann Arbor, Grand Rapids, and all of your selected favorites. Now, back to what I was talking about earlier. Why does this only have two, but this has four? Again, this is kind of like your MFD portion of the transponder. While you are on these selected pages, winds aloft, radar, etc., this allows you to deviate from this screen to the traffic page. Okay? Because safety first. While you are looking at all your additional features, weather, winds aloft, TFRs, NOTAMs, it allows you to keep an eye on the traffic in the surrounding air traffic airspace. So that again is the ultimate reason why the traffic is up on this side. Now that we're familiar with this transponder, there's a lot of frequently asked questions and I've got a list of frequently asked questions on a different video. I'm going to post a link for that video right here and go ahead and click on that. Meet me at the next video and this next video most likely will answer a lot of your personal questions prior to making the next step and purchasing this unit. So like the video, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you at the next video.